Historians have always been fascinated by the past. From excavating ancient sites to uncovering long-forgotten artifacts, there are so many ways for historians to learn about the past. These findings help us better understand the history and what it means for our future. Here are some recent archaeological finds that shed light on history, from ancient civilizations to more modern developments. You will be shocked to know that at least 25 young men and adolescent boys burned and chipped skeletons were discovered within the dry moat of the remains of St. Louis Castle in Sidon, Lebanon. If you want to know why, keep watching the video. Buckle up as we are going to start now. The number one archaeological find is the Golden City of Luxor, Egypt. One of the greatest ancient Egyptian towns ever discovered is said to remain buried under the sand for thousands of years and escaped researchers for ages. The site was found by chance while researchers were looking for the funeral temple of the child pharaoh Tutankhamun along the Nile's west bank near Luxor. Instead, they discovered a well-preserved urban town complete with homes, streets, and walls, some of which are still 10 feet tall. According to hieroglyphic writings, the city was named Ten Aten, or Dazzling Aten, and it was established by Tutankhamun's grandfather, Aminotep III. I call it the Golden City because it goes back to Aminotep III's reign, which was the golden era of ancient Egypt. Project director Zahi Hawass explains, Egypt's primary administrative and industrial hub was Aten. The city's exceptional preservation provides academics with an unmatched perspective of life over 3,000 years ago. Despite excavating just roughly one-third of the site so far, researchers have discovered dwellings holding daily artifacts like pottery pots, children's toys, and limestone game pieces. They've also discovered bakeries, kitchens, and other food-related structures, as well as a jar holding more than 20 pounds of dried meat prepared by a butcher called Louis. There are also mud brick workshops and ornamental amulets, as well as a residential and administrative area surrounded by characteristic zigzag walls. Scholars do not yet know why Aten declined, although it is possible that it was abandoned after Aminotep III's son, Akhenaten, relocated the Egyptian capital from Luxor to Amarna, 250 miles away. Next, we will discuss the oldest animal art found in northern Saudi Arabia. The earliest life-size animal reliefs in the world are now known to be 12 panels portraying pictures of camels and wild donkeys. Researchers used methods such as examining tool marks and erosion, as well as radiocarbon dating, to date the reliefs at the camel site to the middle of the 6th millennium BC. It is 5,000 years earlier than they had previously anticipated. Northern Arabia was wetter than it is today during the Neolithic period when nomads herded sheep, cattle, and goats and hunted rich animals. Animals would have played an important part in the herders' lives, which may explain why they produced such huge reliefs. According to archaeologist Maria Gaugnin of the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History, the site was undoubtedly utilized for decades, if not millennia, and new reliefs were frequently added or old ones re-carved as features faded. I wonder whether the place was visited on a daily basis, she speculates, but reliefs were only added on rare occasions. Or was it only visited on rare occasions when new reliefs were added or old ones were repaired? Guagnon, on the other hand, has no doubt about the Neolithic artisan's ability, having worked high above cliffs where they would have never been able to view the complete animal while carving it. The degree of realism in detail is astounding, she adds, and the technical expertise and communal effort engaged in the fabrication of these reliefs demonstrates the significance of rock art in the social and symbolic lives of the Neolithic herders in Northern Arabia. The subsequent archaeological discovery we will discuss in this video is the bronze map found in Lujan, France. A team of academics headed by Clement Nicolas, an archaeologist at Bournemouth University, were interested when they first viewed archival pictures of a shattered schist slab kept at France's National Archaeology Museum. They assumed it was a map because the 7 by 5 foot stone was engraved with repetitive patterns connected by a network of lines. The slab was recovered in 1900 from a barrow in Brittany, where it comprised one of the walls of a stone tomb dating to the end of the Early Bronze Age, about between 1900 and 1640 BC. The over-a-ton relic had been in storage for more than a century until Nicholas and his colleagues, notably Yvonne Piler of the University of Western Brittany and France's National Institute of Preventative Archaeological Research, removed it to take a closer look. 
A triangular hole at the slab's left edge mimics the form of the Odette River Valley where it was found, according to the researchers. This hollow square pattern looks to depict a large granite monolith in the environment. Similarly, the lines on the slab nearly correspond to the area's river network. Nicholas's team determined that the slab represents a map of a 19-mile by 13-mile region dating from around 2150 to 1600 BC. This is Europe's earliest map of a region that we can identify, Nicholas explains. The experts believe the map reflects the domain of a minor Bronze Age monarchy and that its goal was to lay a claim to this land because of pattern in the middle of the slab. Now we will talk about the discovery made on White Sand, New Mexico by those archaeologists. Archaeologists have unearthed a series of sites over the last two decades that demonstrate humanity initially arrived in the Americas as early as 16,000 years ago. Some researchers have investigated locations that have given even older dates, but others have questioned the validity of these finds, claiming that items found from them are not unmistakably the product of human hands. Radiocarbon analysis of material connected with the fossilized human footprints at White Sands National Park has now shown that humans lived in North America as recently as 23,000 years ago. The impressions are among hundreds of fossilized human trackways discovered by archaeologists in the park, which were left in what were once muddy surfaces around the extinct lake. A team led by Cornell University archaeologist Tommy Urban discovered a network of similar trackways, mostly left by teens and younger children, that were layered on top of each other over millennia. Radiocarbon dating of aquatic plant seeds discovered below and above six of these trackways reveals that they were formed between 23 and 21,000 years ago. Scholars might debate whether a stone or bone item was sculpted by people, Urban argues, but there's no mistaking who formed a human footprint. In Sedan, Lebanon, the mass grave of Crusaders is found. During excavations near the town's St. Louis Castle, a mass grave including the bones of at least 25 soldiers murdered defending Christian-held Sidon during the Crusades were discovered. Archaeologists discovered a belt buckle similar to those used by French-speaking Crusaders as well as a coin dated from 1245 to 1250. These findings led them to believe that the soldiers were slain during an invasion in 1253 by an army of the Mamluk Sultanate, an Islamic dynasty that ruled Egypt, most of the Levant, and part of the Arabian Peninsula from 1250 to 1517. According to Bournemouth University archaeologist Richard Mikulski, the men were slain by attackers on horseback with heavy medieval weapons such as swords, axes, and war clubs or maces, maybe while escaping. This is one of just two archaeologically verified Crusader mass burials. We really have very little tangible evidence of fighting from the Crusades, says Mikulski, for an era that is supposed to be so full of bloodshed and strife. This brings us to the end of our video. Don't be afraid to suggest future videos in the comments section below.